way too much honey on there. But whoa, we are getting a really low reading under 16 there. So, I did actually think that because um, the honey is extremely thick and not very runny and it's not cold, it's warm. So welcome back everybody from quite uh, an absence of videos. And as I said uh, in my last video, it's not that I haven't got anything um, new to really tell you, but it's just because it's very, very much the same. And I don't believe in doing videos where there's no need to do them. I know one likes to know what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, and I do try and keep up to date like that. But so as you can see, I'm back extracting back into my temporary extraction room. So this is some of the supers I've pulled uh, last week. I still haven't got them done. I've got another load to pull tomorrow. Um, the weather is a little bit um, crappier, to say the best. But overall, it's good. The honey is more than I thought. So I'm going to just work through this. I'm, I'm about the latest person I know who's extracting their honey, but then I say that. I was chatting to some of my mates yesterday and um, they're all exactly the same. They're just kind of getting it knocked out as and when they can. Um, I wanted to really give you an update on what I'm doing because also there's quite a bit happened with the building, uh, which is all really good, and also the equipment that's going in it. So this is where I kind of break my silence on what I've been spending my money on. Um, as I said to you before, I've had to make a decision and I had a certain amount of money to buy a certain amount of things. Because I've been in the situation where I knew what I needed to fit out a workshop, I believe I've kind of done it. Well, that's a bit quiet. I've just turned off the machine while I unload and I'll carry on unloading while I talk to you. So the um, stonemason is going to come in November when the foundations are ready to be put in. Uh, he'll work with me because in in the foundations on about just about a third of it I'm putting underfloor heating so that will cover the extraction room the annex which will be like a bit of a storage room and maybe an office I'm not quite sure yet of the configuration but the problem I have is if I don't get the slab right at the start I miss out on a lot of easy work because when you put a slab down if you put all your conduits in and everything you want your electricity for your water for your drainage Everything else is basically a doddle after because you just connect it up on top. And don't forget, this is a workshop, so we're going to literally be putting things on top. So, the stonemason will do the slab, but he'll get it all ready. I'll then come in with all the stuff I've got together, and he'll do some of the cabling with all the stuff I've got as well. So we'll kind of work together on that, and he'll leave about two-thirds he'll manage, and he's going to fully insulate the whole slab, but the third that has got underfloor heating obviously will be insulated differently, because then I come and put my water pipes on top of that. And I'm running those to two different areas. And I'll go through those in a minute with you, roughly what the plan is going to be, so you can see for yourself. But there's a lot to kind of explain, and I will try and explain my method in my madness. This is a project I'm doing because I believe it's the right thing to do to me. No other building will be as unique as this. There's other buildings that have been done similar. It won't get the temperature up past really 28 but then I'll use an electric radiator which will bring it up. So what I'm building is a fully insulated building. So the floor is going to be insulated with 60 millimeter uh, thermoboard, whatever they call it whatever they decide is the best one to put in. And then where the underfloor heating is going to go, that will be uh, 60, uh, sorry, that'll be 90, 90 mil insulation under the floor. Then it'll be a plastic screen. Then it'll be the pipe or on top and the grill as well, somewhere in the configuration. And then that will bring up the level. So when the whole lot is, is leveled with the concrete, it'll all be exactly the same level. And then the concrete is going to be polished. Let, let me make this clear. The whole idea is I'll bring in honey in the spring and the bonus of having somewhere to put it where it, even if it's kept at ambient, well more than ambient, kept at a warm temperature, it won't crystallise any further. In fact it may decrystallise. So if I can put a heater in there 
and I can then start the process of keeping it warm and when I come to extract it really quickly the whole thing should speed up and it gives me time to go out and do my bees in the day and extract at night blah 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 so kind of I'll show you the floor plan and we're going to go through that bit first so first of all I thought I'd start by showing you what the overall building is going to look like and these are the, the final plans we have the uh, rear of the building, the front of the building, we've got a pedestrian door there. It's not easy to see at this stage, but that is the gable end to give you some height of the construction. And that's the entrance way, one window there, and two windows on the front and one at the rear there where the office will be. But um, the building is, in total, um, let me just tell you, it's about just over six metres at the apex, okay, at the top and it's about five, five meters at the gable end. So the whole idea is I've got the right pitch on here to have solar panels, which I'm gonna be having. But as and when, I don't know, because I'm having real problems getting in contact with people to give me quotes, because at the moment there's a crisis on, uh, everyone's having problems getting materials, but there is a grant system coming up next year for solar panels, so I may be able to get something out of that, which is great. So that's the overall picture. It's an agricultural building. That's the floor plan there. It's roughly 24 metres by, um, what was the dimensions? <laughs> it sounds crazy, I can't even remember. 24 metres by 12. Um, so that will give you a rough idea. So we're talking 300 square metres is the building. Okay, so 300 square metre building. I've thought a lot about how to divide it up, okay, and the long and the short of it is, this is roughly how it's gonna be divided up. Okay, so um, I've got an extraction room here, which is central, and I've got a warming room here, okay? Ignore that bit there. This is one room or two rooms, I'm not quite sure yet, but I've got the flexibility of dividing it up. That there is gonna be my boiler room where all the pipes go in, where all the electricity comes in. So that's kind of quite central and that's what I'll be working on to get that plan done properly. But obviously this extraction room is gonna be key to the operation. The whole idea is I'll be able to drive in here or reverse in, unload supers onto pallets. They'll then go through into here, which will be the warming room and where it'll all be kept warm until I need to extract it or not even heated if I need to and it's the summer. But it gives me the option and it keeps everything out the way in there, clean and bee proof. Um, yes, there will be bees that arrive in there, so I've got to make a device up that will go through the wall and I can blow the bees through. I've got several methods I think I'm going to use, but obviously a plain window is sometimes easier. But I'm quite loath to put any windows on the south or the north side because that's obviously a security issue. Because I just want to have it sealed. I don't want anything left unattended. So here is going to be my extraction line. This will be the centre of the whole workshop. And uh, the extraction line is kind of the jewel in the crown. Um, I can tell you I bought a 54 frame extraction line from Paradise Honey and it's going to be delivered in about two weeks. It's just been finishing making. Here's some pictures now of it in production. And they've just been putting it together at the factory in Finland. And I can say I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with it. Okay, let's just flip this camera around because I want to talk to you about extraction lines. So the extraction line is a 54 frame extractor from Paradise Honey. It's a bit extravagant, it's probably more than I need, but I'm trying to future-proof my workshop, a millery, my honey house, because I believe that eventually I'll probably be taking on more hives and have a bigger turnover of honey. But at the moment, even with the frames and honeys and supers I've got, it will be working hard um, for quite some time every year. Now, um, I'll talk you through what actually happens. So, um, I'll talk you through the reasons why I've gone for this. Okay, I've looked at the lines from Thomas. I've looked at wet plate, which are the German option. I've looked at Lega. I've looked at Koenigen. I've looked at a lot of other makes and machines. There's not many machines that are universally kind of made to be an extraction line. And the problem is, 
I have come from a situation where I was fortunate enough to be able to use someone else's equipment. So technically, I've, le I've left that environment where I now I have no equipment. So I'm buying the whole thing from new. So I'd need twin extractors, but I want good quality extractors. So I'd probably go for Carl Fritz, but that's, you know, 36 frame extractors from Carl Fritz, you're talking five and a half grand each without delivery. So that's already 10 grand. Uh, you need a sump, you need a pump, you need um, a wax press. So the beauty of buying everything from new means you get a brand new machine, but you get a machine that does everything. And I've seen other machines where they'll, someone will buy two extractors and it comes down a couple of pipes off each extractor and then they, get, they make a joint and then the pipe sits a bit lower to go in the sum and it just doesn't flow properly. Or And believe you me, I've seen a lot of people set up. And that's why I've been to Ollie's in Ireland because I couldn't find a single floor with his setup. But he's, he's already bought some of his equipment. And actually his decapper is exactly the same as the one I've got in my line. But he's got... Um, Peter Boozley equipment after because he has heather honey, which is different. What I'm saying is nobody I've seen has any wrong equipment, but nobody has the right equipment because a lot of people have bought stuff and put them together. And when I mean they haven't got the right equipment, I just mean it works well, but they always say to me, perhaps I would do that in the future. So I'll run through the machine now and you can see what it looks like. Okay. So this is the 54 frame extractor from Paradise Honey. This is the best picture I've got of it, but it means I can talk to you while you see the view. Okay. So this is the machine that will arrive. So this is the SB1 Unpricker. What this is, is a heated tube there. And this obviously heats the heated knives that reciprocate on the front of the frames as they are put in the top here and they rotate round, okay? And then as they go down, they then have all the cappings cut off, which falls down into here. Then the frames get pushed along into the line here. So they are ready then to go onto the next stage to the extractor, which is there, okay? But the honey, this is the nice thing I like, the, the, one of the most important features I like is, this is what we call a honey rocket. Now, it's a wax press, but in a vertical position. And you can just see the skewer at the top. So as the honey and the slurry, and the wax cappings all fall down into here, they come into this part where they mixed up and then they go there, they meet the auger and the auger then turns around and goes up this tube and then as the honey and the mush all goes up it gets compressed and then it sieves out all the honey comes out through this part here and out the top comes your wax which is fairly compressed and that's what this bin is for but obviously it's a bit of a gimmick that just to show that <laughs> i don't know if they're even going to supply the tray but anyway the long and the short of it is it's an all-in-one machine i don't have to worry about emptying a wax spinner i don't have to about cleaning out a spin flow every few days. I will have to empty out the wax uh, and the stuff from here, but at the end of the day, that isn't so important to be done every day. But the main thing is the two products come out. The honey goes into here, which is the sump, and then it goes from the sump, from the rocket into the sump here. Okay, so there's two kind of sumps, all right? So, uh, and then obviously the, um, Frames are pushed along the top here, and then when you're ready, you've seen them on other, other beekeeping videos, how the extraction line works. It's very similar to all of them. The, uh, you've got these interlocking sections here that actually lock in the, um, the rails, and then you slide your frames in, move it around, slide the next lot in, move it around, slide it, and you do that four, five times on this one, uh, and it's 5.11s of 55 frames for the extractor. So it's the date and half frames it will take. So this has been set up. I've sent the frames over to, to Paradise Honey and this is the machine at the workshop, okay? So this is it. And this is my machine and I'm mega, mega excited when I see this because I know it's, it's going to be the absolute dog's what's it's. So there's the heater. You can see that there's a heater and a pump. Slightly different configuration now because it's even more modern since, they're, since they've done it. But this is in their workshop of Finland. And if you scroll up and you go to, to Google Maps, you can actually, because you took this with an iPhone, you can actually see that's where the photo was taken in, um, in Finland. And it's like pretty awesome, that this technology. Because if I click on satellite, you can actually see where the place is that the photo was taken. And yes, it is in Finland. So I was actually quite assured by this because when you were buying things online and you speak to people not a great deal, you suddenly think, hey, imagine if this isn't true. Imagine if this is like someone faking it. 
So there you go, that's where the extraction line is being made and that's where I live. I don't know if you can see me on the mouse there, I'm just here. So anyway, let's get back to reality. Let's go back to map and let's go back to where we were. So as I said, it's all looking beautiful. Everything is amazing. I've actually also bought this um, uh, attachment that goes on the honey pump that goes up and delivers the honey into a barrel. That's the honey pump there. So it's all extremely nice and sparkly and clean, but the main thing is everything is made to work together. Everything is made to be one unit. And that's the biggest thing I was afraid of when I was buying a piece of equipment. I, I wanted it just to work and I haven't got time to fanny around with equipment that doesn't work together. And that unfortunately is the problem with beekeeping. It's making sure that your equipment is compatible in every way. So let's, um, I, I, we found one, one problem. I sent some frames over there. There's the frames I sent. Uh, that are, three of them are the right, are the same size. This, this one, the, the one, second one in from the right is actually a tiny bit longer. So I've got to take these out of the system or trim them all down. So the problem is, there's only very few of them, but it was really, really good that Paradise Honey picked this up. There's the box I sent the frames in from France, because they even asked me to send some frames over. Anyway, there is the machine. And what I like about it is, is it has one power cord, a really thick one that runs the whole machine. And this is from a different view. There you go, all coiled up. And look at, look at the nice work on here. It's all really, I would say, the Rolls Royce of extractors. It is, I would say it's probably the same level as Cowan in America. Um, I just love it. I just think it's gonna be a massive asset to me. Really big asset. And the final picture there, it's just from the other angle. This is from the rear view. And this will be, when it's in my workshop, this will be, the, there'll be a meter here. That's all I need to work this side, maybe a bit more. Uh, but this is where the frames will come off at the end, this side. And yes, it's gonna cost a lot of money. And yes, um, I am probably buying a machine that's gonna be probably not used any more than six weeks of the year. But if you accept that, you accept the fact also that you're going to be able to extract quickly and efficiently and maybe I could also lend the machine to other people who will come in with a set of frames and we'll do a deal on them using my equipment. That might work really well as well. So it gives me options having that machine. But it also means I will spend less time extracting on my own and it can manage it on my own and do everything I need to. So let's talk a bit more about the building. Um, I did show you the overall plan. Okay, so this is kind of a three, the 3D image of the same building. Let's get it the right way around. Is that right for you? Yeah. No, that was right first of all, sorry. So that is the southwest side, or west side, actually west northwest, where I will drive or reverse in. I can unload my honey here, and it will go into the warming room here. You can see on this one, I've actually taken out that joint there. There is a degree of flexibility to come in yet, because obviously I wanted to make sure so the extraction room, that there is, is roughly, the problem with this, I've got this software that I use and you pay like six euros a month and it's really good for planning, but it doesn't give you, a, it gives you a 3D image, but it's not the whole building because I'd have to pay extra to upgrade to do two floors. But what I've got is I've got enough to give me ideas of what I need. So this part will all be a mezzanine above it. So this part will be about two meters, two meters 20 high. We're not finished on the size yet. But the top part will mean on a bit, so there's the steps to the mezzanine. It goes up, and then all this above here will be mezzanine. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it's the cheapest way to divide your buildings off. And we're going to go back over to the computer now, and I'll show you the reason why I've told you this. So this is my friend Ollie's uh, honey room under construction. And this is exactly what I'm going to be doing with mine, exactly the same thing. You see, that's what I'll have at the start, and that's the mezzanine I'm going to put in. And mine will just be a little bit different configuration. But by putting the mezzanine in, what you do is you can divide off your rooms with the legs of the mezzanine. And then you've also got a huge workload above. I think the guy who's given me the quote for the mezzanine I'm going to have is about, gives you about a, over 100 kilos per square meter of weight load. And it's very easy to fit because they just come in and they just fit this structure in. It's like a pre-made structure. All this can be 
made pretty simply it's and it's reinforced steel girders that are very light and together put all together they make a really good it's like a big Meccano set just like the rest of the building you can see there but that then gives you loads of room above to use as an office or storage or whatever you need but also it gives you another floor and for us in France this isn't taxed because it's removable so we don't have to pay tax on it so um, this is when they were building Ollie's at Ollie's. He's let me have these pictures. I know he's happy for me to show them. You can see they use a forklift. They just put it all in in one day. Pretty straightforward stuff. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Before you know it, your mezzanine is up and you have a room. Now, what we're also gonna do is I'll then get a refrigeration company in. And this is the dividing walls. This is what they're doing. They're gonna build a cold room inside my house and that will be the extraction room and that will be the store, and that will be, basically, they're coming on a price with this material here. It's, it's basically like laminated um, polyurethane foam, so it's actually pretty cheap. It's just the labor to fix it up, and they'll build me the rooms I need. And then that's what it'll look like, something like that in the end. So you end up with your rooms built, all divided off, very, very easily. So this is what the mezzanine will roughly cover. That's the picture I've shown you. This is the ex the same one, but you can see we've got the stairs up here. That goes up here. And there'll be one of the, there'll be railings all around here. But I may reduce this down. I may have to budget a bit and reduce this just to this small, smaller L shape, or even just these two, depending on what the final prices are, because I'm waiting for other prices to come in on things I have to get. And I've got to keep some money as reserve just in case. But it just gives you an idea of where we are with the building. Um, set up. So let's just run through it first. I said the, the digger guy will come in October. In November, we'll start the slab. It should be finished by December. In the second week of December, the building is arriving from Friso Kit. So this will all be, that's the manufacturer. It'll all be arriving on two lorry loads, probably a lorry and a trailer. I've got to get someone to unload it and then it'll be ready to be put up. I've got a team of guys coming in the third week of January that's booked. So it's all kind of a bit pressurized now, but the building will be delivered then I'm, I'm assured and the stonemasons assured me the slab will be ready and it's up to me to get everything ready for the slab. So um, uh, when then the guys will come and build, put the building together. That's another over 15 grand to put the building up just to get it put up. Um, it, these are all big bills that I've had to make sure we've got money for and part of the budget. Inflation is so high at the moment, if I didn't buy the pieces of equipment that I was going to buy now, in a year's time, they're going to cost 8 to 10% more minimum. So I've taken the gamble. Life is like that. I'm 50 years old now. now this will be an investment for me that long term I will hopefully be able to either pass to my children if they do ever get interested in keeping bees or sell it on as a business which it is, or sell it on as a workshop that someone else could use for their business. Because the land now is in my name. I own the land outright. That's all been done as well. And um, it's basically, it's not gonna make me a rich man. I'm not very money orientated. My problem is I just wanna have somewhere where I can do my job and do it properly and produce a good product in a timely fashion. The other pieces of kit I bought are a honey um, warmer and a pollen dryer. I've also bought a creaming machine, which will mean that I can um, turn my rapeseed honey into a very much more valued product. Uh, so I believe because we have a lot of rapeseed here and it's gonna continue to be like that, it's a great investment, that machine. It's a 300 litre creamer, but also I can mix sugar in it. So I can fill it with water, add sugar, and it stirs it and it warms it. That's the kind of thing you've got to build into your plan. So I'm making my equipment uh, very dynamic. Uh, what else did I get? I also bought a new little wax melter because the one I had before was the one I shared with my ex-colleague, which was great, but I need to do that myself here. So that's going to be working over time. And um, obviously I bought a bottling machine, which is a... Um, Bottling machine from the Netherlands. It's a Swing Tea uh, 2000 series Appy Matic uh, or Downa Appy uh, bottling machine. But I'm going to go through those machines when I kind of get to a point where I'm ready to start taking them apart and getting them set up. They're all, 
I'm gonna show you all those pieces of equipment individually and do a review on them, which is a great thing to do. Um, I think you remember the expression, I use one time. If you ever wanna find what it, a car is like, use it, wash it, drive it. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do with my pieces of machinery as and when they are ready to be used. The problem is, you see, as I said before about the cost of everything spiralling, I've made that decision. I've decided to just get all the gear I need. There'll be a lot more stuff, hidden stuff. I've got the floor plan for the plumbing to do, the floor plan for the electrics to do. That will add quite a bit of money to the cost of the build as well. But I've got a few key pieces of things that are now purchased. They're here at my house. They're in storage and they are now are ready to be part of the business don't forget this is all going to be a business this has to be paid off um it's a worry it's extra work i've got to insure the building i've got to pay an extra uh an extra electricity fee because it's going to be connected to the mains but i'm hoping that i'll be able to recuperate some of the electricity from from my solar panels on the roofs a lot going on <laughs> it's all a bit like take a big gulp uh I've got loads to do still here. I've got to move all the hives from where the building is going to go, which won't take long, but that's all got to be done as well. So um, I'll update you on the honey harvest. I've got buckwheat to pull, which I still haven't pulled, but it's sitting there, probably being consumed, but not very quickly because it's still really warm. Uh, that's all going to come back this week. We've got a good next few days of weather where the bees aren't going to be angry, um, and I'm hoping that um, I'll get the majority of it finished then. Anyway, until then, take care and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.